Welcome to LeapFrog BI Academy video training series on dimensional modeling. In this video, we're going to be discussing all types of keys that are related to dimensional modeling. We're going to break it down into five categories. We're going to first talk about our business or natural keys. Then we're going to move into our primary keys, followed by composites, surrogates, and finally foreign keys. So let's start out by discussing business, natural, and dimension keys. So a business key and natural key is just a synonym for business key is a field within some system that actually identifies an entity, uniquely identifies an entity. So here we have a customer ID uh, 432 which represents an individual customer, Jane Doe. Uh, 212 is Jack Brown and so on. And again, Calling this a business key or a natural key just has the same meaning, just a different name. Now we'll take that business key and we'll use it in our dimensions, as you can see here, directly. So our business key actually ends up in our dimension, and in that case, sometimes we'll, we'll call it a dimension key. All right, so moving on. Primary, candidate, and alternate keys. So this is all about identifying a unique record in some table. In this table, we actually have three candidate keys. Customer ID, name, and state are fields which contain only unique records. There's no duplicates within any of these fields. So all three are candidate keys. Only one of them is going to be selected as the primary key. In this case, that's customer ID. And the other candidate keys that are not selected as the primary key become alternate keys. So it's just that simple. Let's move on. Composite, compound, or concatenated keys. Again, this is just a synonym. You can call uh, um, a composite key a compound, or you can call it a concatenated key. The meaning is that we're going to use more than one field to represent a key. So let's take a look at name. We couldn't use name as a candidate key because there's duplicates within the name field. John is listed twice. We also could not use state because Texas is listed twice. However, if we combine those into a composite key, we now do have a, a candidate key. All right, moving on. Surrogate keys. A surrogate key is a field that has no business meaning. It's typically auto-generated um, and it becomes the primary key of our dimensions. So let's take a look here. So remember we had a, a business key in our data source, customer ID, and we said that business key is going to be placed within our dimension. So here we have our, John, our uh, um, Jane Doe business key, 432. We can see that the name is actually changed over time and so has the state. So this is a dimension that that has an SCD2 uh, attribute tracking setup for name and state. So we have multiple versions of this same 432 customer. This is where a surrogate key is extremely important. In this dimension, the surrogate key field called ID is the primary key. It has no business meaning. It's just an, an integer that is going to be increased by one every time we have a new record. Um, and its purpose is to uniquely identify not only a unique customer, but a unique record or unique version of a customer within our dimension. That leads us into our foreign keys. And a foreign key is a field that points to a key in some other table. So here we have a foreign key in a fact table. This foreign key customer is pointing to the surrogate key in our customer dimension. And you'll see this over and over again. You have foreign keys in your fact tables that will always point to the surrogate key uh, in your dimension. So there you have it. We've covered foreign keys, business keys, surrogate keys, as well as a few others. Pretty simple video. I hope you uh, got something out of it. And I uh, look forward to talking to you in the next video in this Dimensional Model video training series.